Hey there, folks, and welcome to another update on the geologic unrest that c continues on the Reykjanes Peninsula in Iceland. I am geology professor Sean Wilsey. Today is Thursday, March 13th, and I thought we'd put together an update here to focus on not so much the, uh, you know, imminent or what we expect, the expected, that's probably the better word, uh, volcanic eruption on the Sunukur crater row. Uh, north of Grindavik, and we can see here on the webcam, just sort of business as usual. We've got some steam and outgassing going on on the old lava field. Not a lot of earthquakes to report there. No signs as of yet that the eruption is about to begin, but we know that that can escalate quite quickly. The bulk of this update is going to focus on another event that transpired over the last day or two on the Reykjanes, and that was there, there was a swarm of earthquakes at the southwest tip of the Reykjanes Peninsula. So here we have uh, Grindavik. Here's the area where we expect the eruption. Again, you can see in the last 24 hours, there's been four fairly small earthquakes there, so not a whole lot to report. And then there's just this big flurry and massive uh, concentration of earthquakes of various magnitudes that's occurred here at the tip of the Reykjanes Peninsula and somewhere upwards of 600 or more quakes since this whole thing began yesterday on March 12th at about 2.30 p.m. local time and mixed into that mess there there's about six or so quakes above magnitude three so that was the highest magnitude we saw from so far from this flurry of earthquakes now of course with a um, pretty you know intense and visually arresting earthquake swarm and a expected volcanic eruption a few kilometers away uh, a lot of people have sort of put these together and speculated and wondered exactly what this means is is this recent spat of earthquakes going to affect the eruption does the earthquake activity indicate that magma is moving over towards this part of the peninsula um exactly what's going on here. And I'm no seismologist or expert, but I think I can provide a little bit of balance, maybe a little bit of levity to the situation um, and provide with a little bit different perspective on what's going on with my geologic expertise. So let's look at another view of these quakes here on the fire and ice site. So again, you can see Grindavik here. You can see one or two small quakes here northeast of Grindavik, but then the, the area of focus then being all of these quakes here um, just off the tip of the peninsula. The size of the circle indicates the magnitude. The colors are related to how recently those took place. So you can see uh, a color progression. The quake started here where the green is, and then over time they migrated further to the west. So there is a, a noticeable uh, migration pattern of the quakes over time, uh, it's both looking at the kind of time space um, migration of these quakes moving to the west over uh, some number of hours in the last few days or so. This uh, site also has a nice graph here that shows us the quakes occurring. Um, so you can see when those things really got started in the last day or so. Um, and you can see a lot of the bigger circles are at the initiation of the earthquake swarm. And then as we move to the left on this graph, we go down to zero hours. So the, the time is moving forward as we go left. The um, y-axis here is the depth of the earthquakes. So mainly these are happening around six, six and a half kilometers up to maybe three, three and a half kilometers. So you can see just a, a cluster of quakes here, then a bit of a lull, a little quiet period, um, and then a few quakes, but then there really uh, were some of these larger quakes that began in earnest right about this time. And then you can see the activity continuing more or less up to present here. Um, but it does look like there's two and maybe more if this is all one set, at least two discrete sort of sets of quakes in that region. And then finally on this website, they also have a fun uh, 3D model that shows the earthquakes. Uh, so if we orient this north and south, here's Grindavik, here's the Blue Lagoon, Fagradalsfjallt uh, here, and then you can see these white and blue circles are the locations of the earthquakes. And if we tip this thing, on end, we get the, the 3D picture. So now surface is up here. Now we're looking down and we can rotate that around. So not really defining a a plane like we sometimes see with earthquakes. They're, they're in a, a fairly almost cylindrical uh, distribution here. And again, anywhere from about six or so kilometers up to about three or so kilometers in terms of depth. 
Uh, so that's the data there. Um, another place I like to look at the data is on the Met Office's site, which shows not just a map of the earthquakes, but also when those came in. So this is the last 48 hours on the Reykjanes Peninsula. This includes all the earthquakes, but the bulk of them are down here at the at the tip of the peninsula. So you can see things are very quiet uh, on Wednesday, March 12th. Uh, until about, again, 2.30 or so in the afternoon when you see this big spike in earthquake activity and magnitude. And there's a couple, it looks like maybe three earthquakes above magnitude three. And then you can see as time went on, the earthquakes dissipated in terms of strength and magnitude and also died off a bit in terms of intensity. There's a bit of a lull in here. There's a little bit of a secondary spike here, but a little bit of a lull. And then there's a, another set of quakes that come in um, you know, just before midnight, I suppose, last night, local time, with two uh, greater than magnitude three quakes. And then that energy um, dissipating a little bit. And then if you look at the far right end of this, there's definite, definitely been a drop in activity over the last uh, maybe three or four hours there at that location. So again, I'm no um, expert on earthquakes, and this is just looking at earthquakes in terms of uh, you know, numbers and, and over time, um, but it could be possibly that we're looking at sort of a classic main shock aftershock sequence where we get a quake or two that are higher in magnitude, and then these are all, all the aftershocks coming in, and as time goes by, those aftershocks dissipate a little bit, um, and then another larger quake is initiated, one or two there, and then everything kind of trails off a little bit, little anom anom anomalous spike here with this one, uh, slightly greater than three quake here, but then you can see the earthquake dying down a little bit. So the Met Office in response to this, and you know, again, obviously people both in Iceland and abroad paying a lot of attention to this um, and wondering and speculating what the connection is and what it means and you know, maybe a, a certain degree of alarmism among some folks and populations. They put out a update today um, that kind of summarizes the event and also provides a little bit of their analysis. So up to 600 quakes so far. Um, and, you know, the activity may continue with intermittent behavior. No clear evidence of deformation in the area, which is important because if there's one thing I've, I've talked about here and tried to reiterate is earthquakes in and of themselves are not completely indicative of magma movement. We need to see other evidence and the ground deformation is, is the best evidence for that. Um, so then they kind of summarize the, the, the series, kind of like I did there. And then getting here to a bit more of their analysis, uh, the behavior of the swarm so far shows that activity can decrease and then suddenly increase again. Since 2023, there's been five earthquake swarms in the same area where the activity is now. In addition, there were swarms there in 2021 and 2022. So we've seen swarms like this in the past. And that's something I'll show you here in a second uh, to provide a little bit of balance to this recent event. The earthquakes are possibly trigger earthquakes due to changes in the stress field on the Reykjanes Peninsula in conjunction with seismic activities and magmatic intrusions in the recent years. So if you think about all the turmoil this area has experienced geologically, you know, the intrusion of dikes like in November of 2023, all the little eruptive events, you know, a magma body in a storage area uh, filling up and swelling in addition to the movement of the plates, the extension that's going on, uh, there's literally hundreds of faults of various sizes across the peninsula accommodating the motion. So lots of things going on. Um, and any one of those things or a combination of those things might be contributing to to the stress regime and the, the changes there. But here's the important point here. Deformation data over the past few days do not show clear evidence that the current seismic activity is due to magma movement at depth. Okay. However, scientists are closely monitoring the measurements to identify the most likely cause of the earthquake swarm. So there is no evidence right now that this is due to magma. Could it be? Possibly. But remember, to get this magma up to the surface, it's, we're going to need to see ground deformation and swelling. We're going to see, see earthquakes shallowing. There's going to be need to be a lot of other things that happen. This is an area where we have seen uh, eruptions in the past, literally like hundreds of years ago. So there have been eruptions in this area. This is one of the volcanic zones uh, that define the Reykjanes Peninsula. Um, but right now with just this little swarm that's happened in the last 24 hours, there's nothing conclusive about it being 
related to magma movement. And then they just have a, a selection of the data here, a map showing the quakes, um, earthquake magnitude over time. So here we are. Uh, there's that first big burst of activity on, uh, on Wednesday, March 12th, three earthquakes in rapid succession over magnitude three. But then you can see a lot of this kind of dying down. Uh, a bit of a lull, kind of a, a secondary little spike here, and then another um, bigger earthquake above magnitude three, and then everything kind of like dissipating down and, and ramping down. You know, it's not perfect, but there is sort of that broad uh, perspective there. Uh, this just shows uh, total numbers of earthquakes. So we went from having essentially no earthquakes in the area uh, to having, a, you know, several, a hundreds, basically. Uh, and each little ramp up is likely due to some of these little spikes here. That we see so we have the spike here right around midnight on march 13th that's this uptick in the trend right here and then here we are with greater than 600 earthquakes so far uh, and then this is i think total number of quakes by um by hour so every hour of the day sort of seeing how again there's that big spike there there's all those quakes it dies down a little bit of a lull and it ramps back up comes down, goes up just a little bit with this flurry of quakes there. So that's kind of where we're at so far uh, with the earthquakes. Um, and again, I'll provide a little bit of analysis here in a second. Uh, let me pull this over here. We'll get to that here in a second. Um, okay, so what I want to do now is compare. Here are the earthquakes for this period. So this goes from March 6th to March 13th. So there's the earthquakes in question. These are the earthquakes that I uh, have a lot of people excited and wondering what's going on. A 3.4, uh, there's a 2.7. Uh, there's your earthquake swarm that's occurred in the last 24 hours, okay? And people are speculating, again, it's due possibly to magma movement. But for comparison, again, to provide a little bit of balance here, remember that this is an active plate boundary. And active plate boundaries have lots of faults and structures that relieve stress across the plate boundary. Earthquakes in this area, while they can be associated with magma movement and volcanic activity, your default setting for earthquakes here should be that they're tectonic, should be that these are just regular earthquakes relieving stress in the crust, that earthquakes and earthquake swarms need not be always tied to magma movement, impending eruptions, volcanic activity. So. Um, that's an important point to make here. And to illustrate that a little bit, so you know, where will this swarm of earthquakes go? No one knows. Could, could this eventually be part of a sequence of events that does lead to definitive magma movement, uh, more evidence, possibly a volcanic eruption in the near or long-term future? Absolutely, I don't deny that those are possibilities. But to give this a little bit of perspective, there's a series of earthquakes here that we're all excited about for today. But let's go back uh, 12 years. So I went through the database and found a similar series in the exact same spot from 2013. So here's 2013. This is October 7th to October 14th. So again, this is one week's, one week's worth of data, just like the previous map. And look at the earthquakes here. It's about the same number. And if anything, this is actually a scarier uh, set of quakes because in here we have a 5.2 <laughs> that 5.2 may may well be as big in terms of cumulative energy i'd have to do the math here as most if not all of the magnitude three quakes that just took place uh, over the last 24 hours over here we have a 4.2 so there's bigger there are more energetic quakes here's a 3.9 that's bigger than anything that's happened in the last 24 hours so had you been monitoring this area in 2013, you might have been just as alarmed. Now, the difference in 2013, of course, is there was no volcanic activity on the Reykjanes Peninsula. There was no eruptions that had taken place. This area had been dead volcanically for hundreds of years. But now that we have magma movement here and we have had volcanic eruptions, um, the earthquake swarms sort of have another element of... Um, drama to them i suppose but this is meant to show you here again is is what we have here's your 2025 uh set of earthquakes with the biggest one being maybe that 3.4 there's a 3.5 i think 3.5 was the biggest of the lot 3.3 um so you can see the distribution of those quakes the size of the circle corresponds to the magnitude 
Okay. And then 2013, literally 12 years ago, looking at those quakes, same area, roughly the same number of quakes, um, but a very different uh, interpretation, right? We're, we're, we're thinking about things differently now than we might have then. So the whole point of this is just to show you that earthquakes happen here all the time or frequently. Earthquakes swarms happen in this area quite frequently. Um, and so we should come to expect those. So last thing real quick here to round up this, uh, this update. And I hope this provided a little bit more perspective on things because there's now we have the live chats and the webcams and Facebook pages where everyone's communicating. And I think that's great. Um, but, you know, I know it goes against human nature, but <laughs> in general, assume the least dramatic and the most boring explanation for some of these events that we're seeing. And more often than not, you'll probably be correct. Uh, last thing real quick here, just related to the overall situation, um, is there was an article from Professor Thorlerson. Uh, he was quoted here. This just came out today. He is saying, according to the article, that there will be an eruption at the Sunu Crater series in the next three days. So that would be March 14th, 15th, or 16th. Um, if you remember, there was a previous update I did uh, maybe in the last week or so where he predicted the eruption was gonna be March 20th. So now he's moved off of that date. Now it's in the next three days. Uh, again, the frustrating part about, I respect his work and I respect him as a scientist, but the frustrating thing about these news articles and what's provided is there's no justification. There's no data, there's no analysis, there's no rationale for his claims and assertions. And that's what I find kind of um, frustrating for the most part. Um, and I don't think any volcanologist would go this far without some really hard data to, to back it up. So he's gone from March 20th to now the next three days, which would be the 14th, 15th, 16th. Um, and then furthermore, going down and further into the article, although he does say, you know, take into account all uncertainties, uh, he also says it could just erupt later. So now we've gone from the 20th to the next three days to later whatever that means. Uh, and then he does chime in here at the end of the article on this little earthquake swarm we've talked about at the tip of the Reykjanes Peninsula. And he says here that he says it's definitely related to magma accumulation there. Um, and it could be. I'm not saying he's wrong. I just don't know what his evidence is to support that. And so um, as a scientist myself, I feel like we need to be a bit conservative and not get the public in a, a bit of a panic and get excited about these things until we have much more conclusive proof and we should provide that proof. Uh, and he even says at the end here, so it wouldn't surprise me if this ended in an eruption. Um, and it may, I'm not saying it won't, but it was a little frustrating reading this knowing, not knowing what the data was to support that. Um, so. So there you have it. Um, so that's my update for today. Hopefully that helped provide a little bit of perspective, um, maybe the other end of the spectrum from, from what Professor Thorderson put out in that news article. Lots of earthquakes here, but again, these are quite small quakes. You wouldn't feel most of these. Here's the range of quakes uh, you might feel. Again, this is the last 24 hours, so it's, it's missing some of those quakes that occurred when the whole series began. Um, yeah, so that's sort of it for today. We'll continue to monitor the situation. Uh, if an eruption were to occur, I will do my best to try to get on with you, probably live stream and share my thoughts and, and look at the data together and learn together. But for now, hopefully this uh, finds you well and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.